What's up everyone, Maku here with another video. Basically, um, this is a tutorial video for setting up Dolphin for Crystal Chronicles because I said in episode one of my Let's Play of it, which you should totally check out because it's awesome and it starts out really long and I apologize for that. But I said in episode two that I would show how to set this up, but I decided that, hey, I'm going to do it as a separate video because I wanted to go more in depth and actually make it useful for information rather than putting it at the beginning of an episode that made no sense because it would have been just padding to an episode that otherwise had different type of content. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to need. So first off, you're going to need Dolphin and you're going to need Visual Boy Advance M along with at least a modified Wii that can run homebrew applications. I don't think you need to mod it like physically, but you need to be able to run homebrew applications on it. And I have one of those. And so that's actually how I got the BIOS files for the GameCube for my audio. And then I also ended up using that to rip other games. I think the GameCube version of Crystal Chronicles I did years ago on a modified GameCube. And so that's where my BIOS file came from, or sorry, ROM file came from, or ISO, whatever the hell it's called when you end up using that. And then basically that's how I ended up having that. And so you do need to have that. You also need a modified Game Boy Advance, which I don't know where my cable is anymore. So I have an outdated thing because I don't have a modified SP. I just have the modified Game Boy Advance original, but you can actually end up buying one of those. Um, I don't know how much they cost, but regardless, you're breaking the rules. So I just say download it, whatever. Nobody cares. But basically, yeah. So that's what you kind of need for this. So let's go ahead and go into what you actually need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Dolphin and I'm going to go ahead and start up Visual Boy Advance. And you're going to need both of these. Now, Visual Boy Advance, after you set up all these settings, it's going to give you this error in the current version that I'm running. Just ignore that. It has absolutely no relevance whatsoever to actually running the game. But regardless, let's go over the Dolphin settings first. Now, Dolphin is what's basically going to be rendering everything. So you want to make sure everything is kind of set up for this. Now, most of the configuration stuff here isn't going to matter. I'm just going to go ahead and click right through it. It's, most of that doesn't matter. But the main one here is that you want to make sure on your DSP settings, you're using LLE. Now, this is the reason why you need a Wii Regardless, you need to have the kind of BIOS sound files or whatever the hell they end up calling them. And you need to have those in order to get proper animation on your Game Boy Advance audio when you're playing the game. Otherwise, it'll sound crackly or have audio glitches and stuff like that. Now, you can play with it on HLE, and I'm sure future versions will end up fixing it, whatever. But you do actually need the kind of normal version or else it will crash. And if you try to play multiplayer without the official LLE version or whatever, that sound BIOS file I just talked about, it will not work like whatsoever. It'll crash and everything will burn and it's not very great, but they might fix that in the future version. So yeah, I'm using Dolphin version 5.0, um, 2742 during the making of this video. So keep that in mind. Now I am using also X audio two for all of my audio outputs. So that's another thing to keep in mind. I don't know if that's actually going to affect it, but that could be performance wise, whatever you want. You'll also want to make sure use panic handlers are off. If you're going to start having problems with your visual boy advance, because it will start throwing up errors on dolphin, like crazy. If it tries to disconnect every once in a while, which is a problem I had on some versions of dolphin, but not all. Now when you get into graphics, most of the graphics, once again, doesn't really matter. So I'll just click through them real quick. So you can end up seeing what I have set, but you don't necessarily need it, especially um, texture cache. It was perfectly fine on fast, but I put it on to save because I have tons of memory. Now, one thing to note is you do want external frame buffer to be on at least virtual or else you'll end up getting some visual glitches when it goes into the Game Boy stuff. That's mostly for multiplayer, so it doesn't necessarily matter if you're playing single player, but it is kind of nice to have this enabled anyways because it enables a lot of other effects in the game as well to make it look just like it did on the GameCube, which is kind of nice. Everything else, whatever, preference, it's perfectly fine. So yeah, there you go. And that's how to set up Dolphin for the most part. You do want to set on your controllers. Now, if you're playing single player, you'll have a standard controller for your GameCube controller up here in port one. Port two will be a GBA. That's if you're playing single player and that'll allow you to have your map. You can technically do more GBAs, but it starts running into some problems. I'll talk about a little bit later when we after we set this all up. But if you want to play multiplayer, you'll set up everything to be a GBA. So you'll be like GBA, 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 GBA. And then there's a specific way to set it up. I'll show that after I do the single player setup. So we'll do capture controller. There we go. And do make sure to have your stuff configured the way that you want it. And you do want background input as well if you plan to have any sort of controls with the uh, Game Boy Advance. Because the Game Boy Advance emulator, at least at the stage that I'm using it at, will only take keyboard inputs if it is actually the front window. All right, so now we're almost done, actually, for setting this up. So do make sure to have your ISO slash ROM file slash GC, I think is the other version. I don't I don't know. Mine ripped as an ISO, so there we go. But anyways, you go over to your Visual Boy Advance, or maybe I converted it. I think I converted it to an ISO. It ripped as a special file, and then you had to use soft. I don't know. That was years ago. Anyways, sorry, that's semantics. Um, so yeah, Visual Boy Advance. So there's a few things that you want to set on here. So first things first, go to Options, go to Link, and then the Link Type, you want to have lo 
local mode and link at boot on and i use the speed hack which some people recommend not but it seems like in the current version it works perfectly fine and it seems to actually help with speed a lot and so that is good make sure your type or type of connection is gamecube now these local mode and link at boot things don't necessarily seem to really affect much i've actually had them turned off and it hasn't done anything you can also configure a latency once again i haven't noticed it actually affecting anything i did notice if i set latency over um a thousand then it would start if it ever like disconnected from the emulator it would start to like stutter a bit on the game boy advance side but it literally had no effect whatsoever on the other stuff video and audio settings doesn't matter but since i'm setting up for recording i'm gonna do this real quick because something that i'm doing for my input thing there we go so that's that's completely relevant but yeah so the next things you want to do is go to your general tab and basically on here you can set down your throttle what you can do is you can either leave it at 100%, which will mean it stays at, I think, 6 FPS when you're at game. However, you can do no throttle. And then when you speed up the GameCube, it'll actually speed up the Game Boy Advance visuals as well, which is kind of a trade-off. I have it on 100% right now because it looks more visually appealing. However, you can end up unthrottling it. The other thing, once we end it started, we're going to want to turn on turbo mode. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow it to run at a higher um, clock speed. Than it normally would which you need that for the emulator or also to end up botching down dolphin because the dolphin will only run as fast as the visual boy advance will which visual boy advance itself is not that heavy when we're running this but it will be pretty much kind of whatever and then auto skip frames i have enabled so that it'll skip frames and everything like that whatever whatever and that's all we need to set up for this you will want to reboot it after changing the link stuff also make sure your inputs are not your controller or else you'll be controlling the game boy advance and the gamecube control at the same time which can cause performance issues in the game boy advance tab now we want to set up our bio so you want to be configure go to your rom file and this is where you're going to put your game boy bio and then basically you go into your um once again game boy advance options you go to use bios file and then when you end up doing that you want to actually once again restart it and then you go to open and you want to find your bios file that is in there and so basically we'll load that up load 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 and I have another version, but I'm going to use this version, which I think is from an SP. Yes, loading. It's going to take a while to load because I don't know why. I don't think everyone has this problem, but my Visual Boy Advance is just incredibly slow to load and move and everything like that. And I think it's the way that it's emulated. Anyways, we're going to get that classic sound. Now it's going to come from the right side of the ear or whatever. Um, don't worry, it always comes through both uh, normally. That's what I was just setting up in the audio settings for whatever. Anyway, so now it is set up to connect to Dolphin. Now you can start it up before or after you start up the game because that's just the way that Dolphin works. It supports hot plugging, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so now we end up starting up the game. So now we have it load in and then you'll see over here, this went unresponsive and it'll actually end up setting up quite nicely. Real quick, it'll do the whole little Nintendo thing like, just like it did on the Game Boy Advance, which is actually pretty cool, by the way anyway so here we are in game and then you'll get this little screen and then basically when we go into game it'll end up swapping over to a single player thing i can go ahead and swap over my screens to however i end up setting it up to record i like to do this thing to where i make it absolutely optimal so the best quality possible pixel perfect pixel perfect pixel perfect and then i like to set this thing up you can do this whatever way that you want but that's how i end up doing mine and then basically if we load into game Oop, it stuttered there. It's going to stutter a lot when you first end up setting it up because, once again, the Game Boy Advance, it only runs as fast. Now, I have background input for both of them set on, so I can do this. Now, one thing to note with the input on here is if I want to use keyboard inputs for the um, Game Boy Advance. Now, in single player, you don't actually control anything, but this is why you want background input because if somebody's using, like, let's say you're playing multiplayer and you want to use the Game Boy um, Advance, the gamepad seems to work in background input. I'll just load up the one I did for Let's Plays. And so that's perfectly fine. However, basically, if you want to actually have like a second player using the keyboard, you'll need to be able to use the keyboard and whatever. So yeah, we can basically go in game and then you'll end up seeing it stutter a little bit. So one graphical glitch that you have is like it says waiting for connection and it'll kind of like plop up and down. Now in the, uh, basically in the Game Boy Advance thing, there you go, you see the little mini map? It's going to freeze up real quick. There we go. So it kind of freezes up when it initializes. So normally what I'll do is I'll start up a game and then go back and then set up all my recording stuff. But yeah, so basically, um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, it'll set her up because of that whole um, loading thing. It has to initialize what it's going to be sending and it'll actually switch over because originally since it was in slot two, it's going to show that it's player two. And so, yeah, but basically this works perfectly fine. And this is how I've been kind of doing it. You can end up looking at the performance and everything like that. 
And obviously we want to go to emulation and go to turbo mode. And then that will allow us to actually go up to, I think, 300 times speed or something like that. Yeah, there we go. Now we can actually speed up the game without it hatching. But if I go ahead and turn that off, I go to emulation turbo mode, then you'll notice that I can't go above 100% because it's not allowing me to actually go over that amount in the clock speeds of the Game Boy Advance. So basically, if your Game Boy Advance emulator is not running well, which this one absolutely runs terribly, by the way, I just want to point that out. There are better Game Boy Advance emulators. So if you want a better Game Boy Advance emulator, go look at other ones. But um, yeah, for the most part, this works. And so I haven't really found any major glitches. Every once in a while, it stutters when the Game Boy Advance kind of disconnects from Dolphin, which seems to be a build issue and not necessarily a problem in the long term or anything like that. So it'll get fixed eventually. But yeah, from that point, it pretty much works. Now, to be able to set up multiple players, so if we go ahead and reset our dolphin here, let me go ahead and I like to pause it and then reset. And then basically, we'll need to close this. So basically, if you ever want to like reconfigure it, you're going to need to disconnect the Game Boy Advance, which is pretty unfortunate. Actually, I think I need to stop the emulation for this to work. So in order to get two of them working, I need to start up two Visual Boy Advances. Just to get multiplayer working, by the way. And this will end up doing this whole little bug thing. You'll get it for both of them. Now, the first one that you open is going to be considered player two, while the second one that you open is going to be considered player one. Why it does this, I don't know, and it doesn't always do it, but that seems to be the sort of continuum that ends up going on here. So anyways, we'll end up setting that up, and so that will end up doing that. Um, one thing that you'll need to know is that every time you want to have a second player, you have to go to input and configure your inputs individually for each player. I'm not going to worry about it. Well, actually, no, I have to worry about it for right now because I'm going to be using it. So hold on. Do up, down, left, right, A, B. That's all I'm going to need. Okay. And then you also, well, actually, no, I need my, um, I need select as well. The multiplayer in this game is actually really cool, by the way, if you've never played it. Oops. I want to clear that. Backspace. And then right trigger. I don't know why it does that. It's so annoying. But anyways, oops. Back and back. And then select and start. There we go. So that, now that one's configured, then we go to options and configure this one as well. So we'll go to input and configure. I'm just going to do clear and then up, down, left, right. Um, I'll do my friend's configuration that he loves to use for whatever strange reason. That's the <laughs> configuration he likes. But anyway, so now once we have that set up, we'll go ahead and start up Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And we did go into controllers and set two GBAs, by the way. So you want to make sure that is set up before you start the game. And now, when this ends up launching, we can go to File, Open, BIOS File. You can also open the BIOS files before you start up Crystal Chronicles. But I found that when you do that, it runs into some glitches. So we have that open. You can also use Open Recent, by the way. Um, I don't because my list is long, and so I'm not worrying about it. Um, but yeah, so basically that'll start up. One of them will start up at a time. It can't read from a BIOS file from two emulators at the same time for whatever reason. Once again, that's probably something they coded in. Um, but regardless, so there we go. The second emulator that we started up is going to be player one, as I mentioned. And then the other one is going to be player two. So player one is blue. Player two is red. Um, player three is a green, I think. I don't remember. But anyways, so there we go. We got that set up. I'll just do a really basic setup for this. There we go. Set this one down here. Now we go into game, low game. Whatever. Multiplayer mode. Oh, man, I don't have a multiplayer save on here. Ah, whatever. We'll just go ahead and start up. Accessing memory card. Go to Solis. Just load up my other one so I don't screw up my uh, other one. Also, it's going to stutter a little bit here and there. But go to setup. Set out or whatever. And you'll notice, once it loads, there's going to be two different kind of icons. And this is because you have... Well, uh oh. What's happening? Oh no, I forgot to set turbo mode. I forgot turbo mode. Emulation, turbo mode. You'll need turbo mode for both of these to work properly, I believe. Uh-oh. All right, so something happened where it's not working, but there it goes. Okay, that was a hitch. But regardless, you're able to kind of use both players at the same time. So I'm using my keyboard for player two. And we need to make them a player. So when we go over here, it'll actually have the selection. Oops, I hit B twice. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Basically, you'll notice that on the screen, on the Game Boy screen, we'll name him A. All right, cool. Male. I don't care. Whatever. I just need a character to use. Yep. Ah! And then basically, when you end up creating characters, you'll end up showing all your UI stuff on there. Go to confirm. There we go. And now I'm just basically showing you how it works. 
Oh yeah, it's gonna show this tutorial thing. Alright. Yeah. But you'll notice on the side, there we go, we got the two maps that are gonna show up on there. Now one thing to do with the maps, why I ended up starting the BIOS afterwards, is I've noticed that the maps end up bugging out if I don't actually start up them properly, like one screen will just have no map at all, which I know it's supposed to be like a radar thing, but the radar doesn't work. And that's what I'm saying is that player one or player two, whoever has the map up first will have the proper radar. However, the other person will just have something that just it will show the dots, but it won't actually show what it's supposed to show, which is super frustrating. But do keep in mind, the person that has to use the game or the keyboard and not using a gamepad, you can configure multiple gamepads, by the way. So if you want to do up to like three or four players, then you'll want to set it up that way. But the person who has the keyboard controls is going to have to use the um, going to have to have focus in front. But basically, here we are. We're able to hit select to go into our menus. And so we're able to swap through them like so. What did I set that to? I don't remember. Um... Oh, I actually hit select to go outside of it. But regardless, you can go through all your menus and stuff like that. And it seems to work for the most part. So we'll hit shift here. And then what did I set it to? It was like up and down, I think, or something like that. Shift up and down. And yeah, so it works. It, it sort of works. Now, one caveat that I do have with this is this simple little thing right here. Now, you'll notice when I'm moving, sometimes my game will kind of stutter if I hold down A. It might do it, it might not, but sometimes what it'll do is it'll have problems with the input, and so you'll notice that the character is stuttering here. Now, this is one problem with the current build. You can use an earlier build to fix this, but essentially what it does is it kind of skips around and sometimes the effects don't hold down. So my controller is able to hold properly, whereas my other character is not able to because I'm holding down the key right now. It's supposed to charge and it won't charge properly. So there are some caveats with using multiplayer, as I said earlier, but if you use a build, I think it's like 4.0 and then dev build like 5,000 or some ridiculous number like that, it ended up working perfectly fine. But then I ended up getting audio glitches, which is something that I couldn't stand. So, uh, yeah, but there you go. That's how you set up Final Fantasy Chris Chronicles on Dolphin and Game Boy Advanced M or whatever. VBA, VBA M. There we go. I, I couldn't even say it. Anyways, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this one. I don't do these very often. I might do more of them if you guys are interested. But yeah, so basically that's how you end up setting Dolphin up with the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. If you want to see more tutorials like this, want to know more in-depth information about this type of stuff, do make sure to send it my way. Send those thoughts, send those ideas, and anything that I ended up missing, leave those in the comments as well. Maybe you know a fix to this little stuttering problem that I have with some characters, which... It does it sometimes and doesn't others. It's very, very strange. One thing that I noticed is you can technically close it down and reopen it over and over again until it works and then you're perfectly fine. Um, otherwise, yeah, but it works. It works well, actually. It works a lot better than I thought it was going to, which is surprising. So I'm able to actually go through all the menus and stuff and the game is perfectly playable. And you may see the kind of like Game Boy Advance stuttering and stuff like that like that, but that's actually how the game was on the Game Boy as well or the GameCube as well. And now you'll notice that I'm stuttering now as well. So I don't, I think it has something to do with like the switching over, I think maybe. Oh, now I can't even go into the menu. Yeah, so the multiplayer, I'm just going to say doesn't work. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. And you can also check out my other types of videos as well. I do impressions reviews. I do Let's Plays. One Let's Play is of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles if you're interested in the game itself. And you can also end up checking out my impressions review series, which the most recent one I did was for Ori and the Blind Forest. So yeah, once again, an amazing game. My thing broke. There it goes. Yeah, the Game Boy, it does not like running more than one Game Boy. It runs perfectly fine with one Game Boy, but two of them, not so much. I hope Dolphin ends up fixing that at some point. And I think I'm stuttering now because I'm running out of storage uh, space on my recording drive. So, uh, yeah, I should probably end this soon. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video slash tutorial slash whatever the hell it ends up being. Stop it. Stop it. I wanted to make that a smooth transition, not a freezy one.